168 million children today must be forced to work somewhere in mines and factories, houses. 58 chil million children in the world have no fortune, have no opportunity to sit in a classroom, to go inside the schools. They're out of schools. And another 150 children, 150 million children, were compelled to leave the school before attaining fifth grade. About a billion children in the world are not having safe drinking water and food. This is the state. Five and a half million children are enslaved. Enslaved. They are not just simply going to work and earning money. They are the one who cannot even meet their parents. They are not allowed to do so. They were used as prostitutes. They have been given guns in their hands to kill their own friends and families. And the number is perhaps growing. And the trafficking, selling and buying of human beings, and particularly children, is supposedly the largest single illicit trade in the world. $150 billion annually are earned out of this business, illegally, all black money, all illicit earning, which is used to propel the crime and corruption. It goes on and on. If we are not going to challenge it, who will? If we believe in humanity, if we are talking of making a better world, then we have to own some moral responsibility towards our children because they are our present and they are our future. They are not simply our future, they are our present. Sisters and brothers, I tell you, that's just less than a week of global military expenditure, annual military expenditure, can bring all children to our schools. Are we really poor? I refuse to accept that we are so poor that we cannot bring our children to our school. I refuse to accept that we don't have that passion and courage and commitment and honesty and moral. We have. Each one of you who is sitting here, has a leader inside him or her. Each one of you are, is an entrepreneur. Each one of you is a change maker. Each one of you is a solution. But sometimes I feel that when it comes to a connect of all these solutions, of all these passions, of all these change making, then the question mark begins. Each one of you have compassion, but that compassion is so confined for your, your own biological children, your relatives or friends' children. And a lot of things are done. A lot of corruption is made. A lot of scandals are exposed. And when the scandals are exposed, we are hundreds of millions of dollars are taken away illegally and somebody if somebody asked to a uh, to a to a politician or a leader in not in my in my country i'm talking generally that why have you taken away so much money from the public good no one can answer perhaps they have 
a desire that we are going to take hundreds of millions of dollars or a billion dollars so that our generations and generations to come are safe financially, no problem for them. Because these people cannot spend so much money. Where the money will go? For your generation and next generation. That's why you are earning money, many of the people who do the wrong things. And also sometimes the right things. What Europeans spend annually on cosmetic. One sixth of that can bring all children to school. What the Americans spend on tobacco, just 20% of it, one fifth of it. If all Americans decide that they are not going to consume any tobacco for the whole year, just in whole year, they have to give up it only for a few weeks or even few days actually, not even weeks. You can solve the problem of education. So it's the question of priority. Where do we fix our priority? How we connect with these issues which are vital but largely neglected and ignored, or comfortably, conveniently ignored, I would say, systematically ignored. Because somebody benefits out of these children. As I said, that if they are sold and bought, $150 billion are earned. I call upon you. Your personal compassion must be translated and transformed into a social compassion transformative compassion, engaged compassion. And that transformative and engaged compassion has to be globalized so that we can really make a beautiful world for ourselves and for our children. We are connected through internet and high speed and technology and it's important. Very fast growing. That is our aim, speed. But sometimes we forget to connect with each other as human beings with the high degree of compassion which is already in us. We need not to borrow it or buy it from outside. Each one of us has. And that's why, while working with the children for all my life in 35, 36 years by now, it was not easy. I come from a modest family. My father was, I said yesterday, he was a simple police constable. And he died early, so my mother was widow. She was illiterate, totally, housewife. But she has a determination that all her children should study well. They must go to school and complete their education. And since I was good in mathematics or science courses, my elder brothers and my mother had a dream that I should become an engineer. That I did. I studied hard and I passed out. I taught in the university for about a year in Bhopal University. And when I gave up the career, all my friends in 1980, it was the time when India did not have so many engineering colleges and engineers. They thought that I am I'm mad. Kala Satyati has become crazy. My mother cried for several days because she had, she was worried about my future, my financial future as well. But right from my childhood and student life, I had a passion. And that passion, I always tried to convert into social action. It did not remain confined to myself. To bring about that change which I dream, and that I have to begin with. And I always believed that if I believe in something, 
which is right in my eyes, which is right in deep in my heart. If I don't take the first step, then who will do? If not me, then who? And if not now, then when? We cannot wait for those things. You and me can wait. But the two children who are here, the two boys, one want to become an engineer, he had a dream. One wanted to become a businessman, he had a dream. He has a dream. Thanks to this Funded Foundation, that with your efforts, their dream will definitely come true. But there are millions of children in the world who cannot have the dream. Hundreds of millions of children. I go to remotest parts of Africa and Latin America and Asia. I work in over 100 countries. And when I sit with the children and talk to them as friends and ask simple question, which I ask to these boys, what dream you have, what you want to become? They had no dream. They have no dream. Perhaps they will have no dream if we don't act now. The death of the dream is, the, is, is even bigger curse than the death of a human being. We are killing our children by killing their dreams. We have to change it. Though before yesterday I was in I was in uh, London and a BBC, a renowned uh, anchor in BBC was interviewing me. And he was very moved, actually. He read about me and he knew. He said, Kailash ji, you have been freeing all these children for so many years and their stories are so pathetic. Are you sad? Are you angry? Are you frustrated? Or have you become immune, listening to all those mothers who were sitting in my office? Since morning, those have gone everywhere because their children have been kidnapped. The police does not file their complaint. They have no idea what to do and where to go. And they come with some little hope. And when they see just one single hope in me, and I talk to them, this guy was asking when you are talking to those mothers every other day, what happens? And the, and the boys and girls whom we free, when they narrate their stories, how they have been taken away, how they have been confined to workplace, beaten up, poked with cigarettes, sexually abused all the time. I said that, of course. I'm angry. I'm angry and I become angry each time, but I don't want to let this anger go out or be dominated by violent reaction or destruction. I want to transform my anger into a passion and transformation. He was asking how I was, uh, I'm going to share with you three or four incidents which made me angry, but how I transformed my anger to a sustainable solutions of problems. 